but it definitely wasn't a headlining show. We didn't get to play for an hour and a half, right? So, I think I want to come back and do this more often. What do you think? Awesome. We're like at the tail end of this tour. We've got 10 shows left or something. And I think that's counting tonight. So, uh, being back on the East Coast is awesome. You guys are always down to party. So thank you so much for showing up tonight. Um, I think the last time we headlined here was before our band broke up. I don't know how many of you guys know about our band breaking up. And, and uh, we broke up for about three and a half years. Almost four years before we decided to get back together. And uh, we did this thing called the Rebirth Tour. And... Um, that turned into a world tour, and somewhere along the lines, we decided to write a record, which is called Race Me, which is why we're here tonight. Because without no, new music, there is no more touring. You know, that's just kind of how it goes. So we're super stoked to be here. We're super stoked to be back in you guys' lives. And this, is, this means everything to us. So uh, thank you so much once again for showing up. Um, how many of you guys have heard of Race Me before? Almost all of you guys. Okay, so that record's really personal to me and, and to our band. This is the, the first time we were ever to make a record uh, with no expectation. We went and made a record that we wanted to hear, something that we wanted to play, something that we wanted to feel. And uh, we made that record thinking that maybe it would be our last record. We had no idea what was going to happen, so we put everything on the table. And uh, there's a lot of stuff on that record that's pretty embarrassing to talk about, but I'm going to take five minutes out of your time and my time to share with you guys because I feel like most people in, in my position, uh, there's a lot of bands that are way bigger than us and there's some bands that are smaller than us, and I feel like people pretend that their life is always perfect and awesome, especially online. If you look at Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, it's all these, these posts about how fucking awesome you are and how many likes you have and followers. And I just don't think that's real life, man. So I'm going to share with you some real stuff right now. Um, we wrote a record about, about some serious stuff and there was a time in my life, uh, 12 years, 11 years, something like that. I was in this band being a fully functioning drug addict. I got on stage every day, just hung over just enough to make it to the next day to do drugs and make it to the next show. In about two years, right after the Rebirth tour, I decided I was going to put all that shit in my past and walk away from it. And uh, it was something my friends always asked me to do. All these guys on the stage always gave me shit my whole career, thinking I was throwing my life away, because I was. But you're never ready to change until you personally are ready to change, right? All right. And the reason I'm sharing this with you guys is because I feel like people in my position never talk about this stuff because it's real. So I got clean, I got off drugs, and then the next two years, well, the next six months, the next six months were a living hell because I was feeling all the feelings that I was, I was numbing with, with drugs and alcohol. So th things got really dark and I was really happy. The band was together, we were writing music, we were making a record. Uh, I had a supportive family, supportive girlfriends, supportive friends. It didn't matter. I still felt like shit on the inside and I still had all these really dark days and there was days where I thought like killing myself. I thought that was the answer. And uh, for some reason, what I did instead of doing that is, and I call suicide a mistake. You can call me uh, insensitive if you want, but I really do think it's a split second mistake any person in this room can make. It only takes a second to make that mistake. It's a second in time. And what I did, I thought about it so much and so hard, I had it all planned out. And what I did was I picked up the phone and I called my best friend and I asked him for help. And that's why I'm still here today. And uh, I don't take that shit very lightly. And I'm probably gonna read all the comments about how you just, this guy just up here cussing his, his you know, he used to be a Christian. I can't believe he's cussing, whatever. But I, I'm speaking seriously from the heart right now because if I, me, a normal person just like you, if I can get help, so can you. So if you've ever felt the way I felt, if you've ever felt that darkness or that depression, I'm guaranteeing you, just, just talk to a friend. Just speak it out loud because the more I speak it out loud, the less likely I'm ever going to do something like that. So thank you for listening to me, man. So, I talk too much every night. I talk too much. I don't really think about it, though. 
Grant, Grant supports me sometimes. So, uh, you're in the wrong place. We're gonna do something we haven't done.